Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. Incense is for fragrance. Fragrance for all. Wow, that was, that was different. How's it going, Bress? Today we're talking about fragrances that are jack of all trade fragrances. Ones that you can wear uh, to a date, ones that you can wear to the office, ones that you can wear casually. Play, date, office, does it all. They are all designers that we're talking about here today. And I've got a wide range. Some of these are gonna be considered more summertime. Some are gonna be considered more uh, wintertime fragrances, but really you can pull them off year round. And I worked in some that are gonna be better for uh, more mature gentlemen, as well as some fragrances for younger guys as well. So all of these are linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there and feel free to use these codes if you shop at any of these sites. GS11 will get you a flat 11% off the entire website. Uh, at fragflex.com, great fragrance discounter. Then of course, Twisted Lily, Max Aroma have the hookup with niche fragrances. And Triple Traders has a ton of clone fragrances there. So use those codes. All right, no particular order here. Let's just jump straight into it. I'm gonna kick things off with this one solely because of you guys. Once again, Eros Flame. I can feel it in my soul that Eros Flame is becoming a meme fragrance uh, on my channel at this point. Not that the fragrance is bad, like it's not a meme in that sense that, you know, it's something you just keep bringing up over and over because it's goofy. Uh, it's just, I can't escape it. As I've said before a number of times, every time I ask you all on the community tab, hey, what's a good fragrance for this, that, or the other thing, this always comes up. To be fair though, it makes sense. It's an outlier in the Eros line. Eros to most people is the Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, Parfum. But for those of us in the know, you and me, we know that Eros Flame is just as good, if not better. It's got that sweetness you want, a big compliment puller. It's got great versatility. You can use this, like I said, any time of year, play, work, date, this will do it. And the Kinoto in there, I think, really helps set this one apart and does give it a more unique flair as compared to the three uh, main line Eros fragrances, if we want to call them that. And good performance to boot too. So Eros Flame, yeah, it's it's just, it's, it's always gonna be here now at this point, but it deserves it. Next up, I want to go with Salvatore Ferragamo Urban Feel. This one doesn't get talked about all that much. And at this point, the Ferragamo Womo line, yeah, it's, uh, it's not doing too hot. I think that would be a comfortable thing to say. But again, you and I, we know, right? This one's a super appealing blue fragrance, really easy to wear. Again, big compliment puller, but much, much, much less well known than uh, most of the blue fragrances out there that other people are gonna be wearing. Nice bergamot in here off the top, that citrus is really appealing. It's actually got kind of a, kind of a thickness to it and a, a sweetness, the way that bergamot comes across. As it dries down, it has driftwood that comes out and broxen in there as well in the base. Presentation looks good. The atomizer, even though it's built into the top, works well. Sometimes they don't when that happens, when that happens, when it's built into the bottle. And one of the best parts about this one, cheap. In the US from discounters, about $35. Now, if you live elsewhere, it could be a little higher, it could be a little lower, but for $35, this is a great bang for your buck. Dior Ohm 2020 is next up. Now, of course, this one was very divisive when it came out. A lot of people, myself included, were not happy with the changes that they made to the Dior Ohm line, but then as time goes on, you wear the fragrance more, you come to accept it, and that's where I'm at now. Well, I went through the seven stages of grief. I came out the other end a better person. Or actually, I just came out the other end liking this fragrance. That's, yeah. It's actually not a big deal. Very woody, modern fragrance with a nice fresh spiciness to it. This one works perfectly. I am literally almost sticking this up my nose. Yeah, I went through that. It has a great classiness to it. Uh, a little touch of elegance while still being 
as I said, extremely modern and wearable. It's fantastic. I love the stuff. Uh, as long as you like woody scent profiles, you should check this out. Now this next one I'm completely biased on, so letting you know it's fair warning, uh, but this is not one of the official 10, so we're gonna do it really quickly. It is my fragrance, South Slope, the fragrance formerly known as Blue Ridge. Should have came up with a cool symbol to give this one, you know, like the artist formerly known as Prince, but no, I'm not that cool. How close? <laughs> yeah, South Slope, it is the exact same fragrance. It's the, uh, you know, same colors, same box even, just a different name. It's available now nationwide, every Perfume Mania, every fragrance outlet store in the country. Amazing for pulling compliments. It is made solely for versatility and for ease of use. So South Slope, uh, a lot of you reached out and said, hey man, where's Blue Ridge at? I can't buy it. And it was, it was uh, sold out for a minute and now relaunched. So if you've been wanting that one, you can get it again. You can also find it at Michael Malul's website and uh, code GentSense will save you some money off that. All right, let's keep it moving. Officially up next to me, to me, 19 degree. Now, this one has some positives, some big positives, and also one major con, one glaring con. First, the positives. The bottle looks great. It feels good, it has a nice matte coloration. I love the cap. I love how this uh, locking mechanism does, how it works. I think it looks cool. And the atomizer is good. The quality is nice. It smells fantastic. Off a of tester strip, it is uh, noticeably a bit similar to Aventus or, uh, you know, intense to Draboise, something in that style, but with an added raspberry note to it. Off skin, the raspberry is a little bit more prominent. It's not as close to Aventus y type scents off skin. And I know I said raspberry, so you may think, oh, Tuscan leather. Nah, it's it's not like that at all. And it does still have off skin. Some of that Citra Rap was a Aventus essence to it. Nice woodiness in there as well. Again, it smells great. Huge compliment puller, extrait de parfum, a lot to love. So what is the issue? What's the glaring issue? The price. This retails for $175. Yeah, that's pricey. Especially when you consider that you can get essentially a four ounce bottle of Cidrap Waze for that price. Uh, they retail what, 180? At least I think that's what it goes for for a 120 mil size bottle. Regardless, you can get them from discounters for way, 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 way less than that. So if you say, oh man, this smells fantastic. It's a little bit in that style. It's straight to parfum, good performance, big compliment puller, but it's like double the cost of what a Mancero would be from a discounter. Then that's where you kind of go, ooh, oh, hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. My excitement went from here down here. So that is the the issue with this one. Everything else is very nice. It's just that price is a, it's an oof. So with this, I would say uh, if it pops up at discounters for a good price in the future ever, absolutely keep your eyes open for that. Scoop it up if so. And these are also available at So Avant Garde. Uh, there's a code that I have, Ashton20, I believe is what it is, 20% off. But these are marked up a little bit higher on Sovant Guard. They're 195. So cheaper than 175 if you took 20% off, but still not cheap. So there's Toomey 19 degree. So much to love. And then, oh, ooh, oh. It's like a, a beautiful woman or something, uh, or man. And you say, wow, look at, look at this. Look at that, look at that. They're beautiful, they're intelligent. They're this, they're that. Oh, and they're serial killer. Oh, oh, yeah, that's gonna. Mm, mm. Dang, now I know why they're single. Uh, after that one, let's do a cheap one. Lalique Porome. Yeah, let's cleanse our palettes. This is gonna be more in that $25 range, something like that. Like most Lalique fragrances, price point at discounters low, quality high. Ooh, super classy. Lavender, rosemary, cedar, oak moss, some citrus in there. Actually, a, a number of notes in this fragrance, a, a large number of notes. It's super classy, elegant, sophisticated, but it is going to appeal more to guys middle-aged and older. It's got a bit of a similarity to Bois du Portugal from Creed, so you could view this as a cheap alternative to that much more expensive fragrance. Just keep in mind, this one is, again, 
for those guys middle-aged and older. If you're a younger guy and you get this in and you spray this on, you're probably gonna be like, oh, dude. It's worthless to me. For people looking for a gentlemanly scent though that has amazing quality for the price, this needs to be on your radar. After that, let's go with Spice Bomb Night Vision Eau de Parfum. Now the original Night Vision, the Eau de Toilette, when that came out, uh, didn't get the greatest reception. Yeah, a lot of people really poo-pooed on that. This one, much better, in my opinion. A bunch of green notes in here, just, just a, an avalanche of green notes, really wanting to drive home that night vision. So you have mint, apple, cardamom, but one of the things that really stands out is pistachio. This has a nuttiness to it that is different than what you're gonna pick up in things like um, the Stronger With You line, for example. This is more of a fresh fragrance with a solid underlying sweetness to it that really helps pull in that attention. It has good performance, it's extremely wearable. The only drawback for this one potentially is that it's not really that spicy. That's not gonna be an issue for a lot of people, but if you go into this saying, hey, it's a spice bomb, I want a lot of spice, you're not gonna get that here. Still though, fantastic scent, great year round usage. Okay, let's go summary next. Light blue, oh intense. This is that time where I harp and tell you that you can indeed wear fragrances like this during the winter. Don't be afraid of it, embrace it. Oftentimes those summery scents will smell absolutely stunning when it's cold outside. They just take on a whole different life. So light blue uh, from Dolce & Gabbana, still one of the most popular fragrances in the US and the world for men. And Owen Intense, I feel like takes that original and just bumps it up a notch. Nice, fresh, sea salty kind of scent profile going on here. And it works extremely well in about any situation. I know it's, again, something you may not think of as a, a work time fragrance. Same with this one here, or you know, potentially this one or that one. But they do surprisingly work very well because this is extremely appealing. It's easy to wear. And so something like that in an air conditioned environment, it's gonna work. So that's light blue O Intense. From there, we move on to Terror de Mess. This is O Intense Vetiver. Uh, a lot of people out there would swear by the original Terre de Mez or the uh, pure perfume version, pure parfum, or depending on who you ask, Ogivre or Autre Fresh. So Terre de Mez, just in general, the line of fragrances, there's probably one in there that would work for you extremely well, especially at work. Now this is for lovers of vetiver. It's right there in the name, Oh Intense Vetiver. I know some of you out there are a little, ugh, a little iffy, a little scared of vetiver. Don't want to let it in, you know? Ah, just playing. It was a vampire. Never let them in. Uh, that makes sense. Just be careful who you let in your house, okay? But vetiver, you can let in. This one has a, a nice freshness off the top, that citrus, uh, not as earthy as the original Terre de Mez. So, you know, that earthiness, that flintiness dialed down here. And then that, that woodiness, a little bit dry, but then also slightly green that takes the forefront pretty early on. I love the stuff, I think it's fantastic, but in general, this is gonna be another one like the Lalique here, that's probably gonna be best suited for guys middle-aged and older. Boss bottled elixir up next, the cap just came right off. The cap clicks into place, but it's not a super snug fit there. Yeah, boss, come on. If I can do this, that's not good. That's not, it needs to click in better. But I will let it slide because Boss Bottled Elixir is fire. This is a fantastic release, which has made me excited once again for Hugo Boss Bottled Fragrances. That one and Boss Bottled Pacific, both really well done. Oh yeah. Woody, spicy, extremely masculine. Got that throwback kind of feel to it a little bit. Obviously a very modern fragrance, but it reminds me a little of what Sauvage Elixir did. Now I'm not saying this smells like Sauvage Elixir, but it reminds me of that one because of the way that they've approached the fragrance here. And as of when I'm filming this, they have just announced a new flanker, Triumph Elixir, Boss Bottle Triumph Elixir. I haven't smelled it, uh, but yeah, they're leaning in, man. As I said though, I'm gonna let that slide because Bottled Elixir is so good, they can call it whatever they want. Last up, 
Luna Rosa Eau de Parfum. This is a blue fragrance, obviously. Prada's blue fragrance. Mm. It grows on you, it does. Very classy and typical Prada style. Nicely sweet, not overdone, not bubble gummy or anything like that. Touch powdery, just a little touch in there. I mean, it basically is what you would think of uh, if somebody said, hey, Prada blue fragrance. You would just go, oh yeah, that. Sometimes houses have a, a certain uh, reputation and it's totally warranted with some of them. Paco Rabanne, for example, loud bottles, loud fragrances, really sweet. Yeah, that's like 90% of what they do. Prada, a little bit understated, but elegant, sophisticated, classy, clean, and sometimes a little powdery. That's just what Prada is usually. But again, it smells very good. And this one can transition extremely easily from work to casual use to a date. So there we go. There are the scents. All of these I feel very strongly about in the sense that they would work really well for this. Uh, maybe they have a con here or two, uh, but these are all really well done. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there as always. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.